Hi everyone, my name is Vinyala Walia, and today I'm going to be presenting on my honors capstone, which is called Policy Based Branch and Bound for Infinite Horizon Multimodal Markov Decision Processes. I worked on this with my uh, two capstone mentors, Dr. Lauren Steinle and Dr. Brian Denton, and I got involved with this through the Summer Undergraduate Research Program in the summer of 2018. Now, I've been working on this up until January of this past year. So the problem that we're talking about is motivated because the treatment of chronic diseases is a decision-making problem that greatly impacts health. Chronic diseases are ever present in America. One in two adults have some sort of chronic disease in our country, and one in four have two or more. Chronic diseases are the leading cause of death and disability. Heart disease, cancer, lung disease, diabetes, all these things are contributing to really big healthcare problems that have been around for a long, long time. So there's this idea of a Markov decision process that allows the decision maker to determine the appropriate course of action through various algorithms. Our Markov decision process is formulated using states, actions, transition probabilities, and rewards. The set of health states in this example right here, which is a toy example, has three states, healthy, sick, and dead. There are two actions the physician can take, either to medicate the patient or to delay treatment. And then you have transition probabilities. The probability that given a person's current health state and an action, the probability that they're gonna to transition to a different state. So in this case, uh, the probability that a healthy patient, should they delay medication, become sick, is 5% in this model over here. And then rewards are, in the medical case, the amount of quality adjusted life years you gain from taking a given action in a given state. So the decision maker can use these Markov decision processes to choose appropriate actions and construct what's called a treatment policy. So a treatment dilemma could be whether to give surgery to a patient or delay it, whether to begin medication or delay, or to choose between different medications. So what goes into creating this MDP model is expert opinion and clinical data. And from this, we can derive our transition probabilities and rewards, which constitute our MDP model. And then it goes to actually solving this Markov decision process to yield treatment recommendations. And we call the optimal treatment policy pi star. And this corresponds to the optimal action that has to be taken to maximize our rewards, which in this case is quality adjusted life years. So what does a policy look like? We're mainly dealing with the infinite horizon case, which in this case means a stationary policy will be optimal. And in layman's terms, that means that no matter what age or time you give this policy, it's gonna be the same at every time. So no matter what your age is or at what time you give it, a healthy patient in this case should always start medication. Whereas a very sick patient should always delay medication whereas moderately sick and extremely sick also should start medication. So this sounds simple enough. So what exactly is the problem? The problem is that there's a lot of different sources of clinical data. And if I'm the physician trying to figure out what's best for my patient, I'm not exactly sure at all which one I should use. So this ambiguity in clinical parameters can either be uh, taken in the form of differences in transition probabilities or differences in rewards. So let's say we have three different health systems that are studying some chronic disease, and they each put out their own model. So in health system one, uh, by taking a given action, you have a 50% chance of staying healthy if you are healthy, whereas model two says it's 70% and model three says it's 30%. Now, if I'm the physician, again, I'm looking at all these different numbers and these parameters, and I'm just like, I don't know what to do. If I just had one model, I could solve this whole problem very easily just by running a very quick algorithm. But because I have all of this conflicting sources of information, I really don't know what to do that's best for my patient. So because of this, say we have three different health systems, specifically the Mayo Clinic, Johns Hopkins, and the University of Washington, all studying some sort of treatment dilemma. Let's just assume it's whether to medicate or delay medication for a patient. Each of them can put out their own treatment policy just by using their own parameters. So Mayo Clinic's parameters, which we could see here, could lead to a starkly different policy than Johns Hopkins or Washington, just based on their data, which can be really confusing. That's why we invented what's called a multi-model Markov decision process. 
in an effort to mitigate this ambiguity. So in an MMDP, as we call it, each source of parameters is known as a model in this model set M. And each model has a corresponding optimal policy and objective value, meaning that if you just look at one model alone, you can get one policy that is best for that model very quickly. So the MMDP aims to find this optimal policy pi star that performs well for multiple models, meaning I'm going to take the same course of action and that course of action is going to work well in each of the different models. So the weighted value problem is the main objective function that we're concerned with for these MMDPs. And because the MMDP in its optimal policy forces every model to follow the exact same course of action, we're going to assign a model weight called alpha to each of the models such that when you sum all the model weights up, you get one. And this objective value is just a weighted average of the rewards you get in each model, given that you are forced to take the exact same course of treatment. So I'm basically doing a weighted average of the value of our optimal policy in each of the different models. And that gives us our final value W over here. And that corresponds to the ultimate rewards we're gonna get from implementing this policy. So in the MMDP case, once we solve the MMDP, we arrive at one policy, not three different policies. And this policy right here is gonna work well in each of the three cases. So mixed integer programming, or MIP, is a current state of art for solving these infinite horizon MMDPs. There was previous research showing that an MIP formulation was really good for determining an optimal deterministic policy. And it uses an underlying linear programming formulation with logic-based constraints. However, the MIP formulation was ultimately ineffective at solving very large decision-making problems, many of which are relevant to our current health space. So what we did earlier in 2018 was we developed a custom policy-based branch and bound. And this outperform standard methods for the finite horizon case very significantly. So these MIP-based methods such as branch and cut and extensive form were implemented along with our own algorithm. And as you can see, the average runtime is significantly, low, significantly lower for our custom-based branch and bound. So the question is, can we exploit the structure of the infinite horizon version and achieve similar computational gains to the finite horizon case? So. Uh, essentially, what our branch and bound algorithm does is it solves these MMDPs differently than mixed integer programming. We're enumerating all possible policies in the policy space, and we're eliminating bad policies. So if we have this tree over here, we're starting with an empty policy, and we're just enumerating the tree, fixing actions as we go down, and before we completely uh, complete a policy that may be suboptimal, we throw it away and don't look at it ever again. And to solve and see how each policy is doing at each level of the tree, we solve what's called relaxation. And from that, we obtain an upper bound. We're basically relaxing the constraints that every model is uh, uh, having to obtain uh, as adhere to the same policy. And we're instead fixing actions. And then once we solve that, we can get an upper bound on um, how good this policy is and whether or not we should continue going down the tree and fixing more actions. So once we attain an upper bound, we can do this using four different methods in, in the infinite horizon case. The exact methods are linear programming and policy iteration, whereas the approximate methods are value iteration and modified policy iteration. So if I only fix this one action here, whereas in these three states over here, they're not fixed, there are different ways to solve this relaxation. And we wanted to figure out which of these methods was the best for our purposes. Another thing we realized was is that there is a very big trade-off between solving the relaxation exactly and solving quickly using approximation algorithms. And that's where this parameter epsilon comes in. Epsilon basically determines how quickly we converge whereas um, for, these, uh, for these approximation algorithms. For a small epsilon, we're going to get really close to solving it exactly, but we're going to spend more time per node. Whereas a large epsilon, we're going to converge very quickly and spend less time per node, but we're gonna end up looking at more nodes in the tree overall. So there's this trade-off we have to keep in mind. So can we uh, pre-compute a convergence parameter that minimizes computation time for these approximation algorithms? So ultimately we experimented with different values of this, uh, of this equation and found that when delta was 10 to the negative three, 
we minimize our computation time using approximation algorithms. Also, things like node selection can influence how well the algorithm performs. Uh, searching the tree using depth first search in which we go all the way to the bottom of the tree before coming back up is one way, whereas breadth first search in which we look at all nodes on a given level before going any level deeper is also an option. So we also want to know which node selection strategy leads to the lowest solution times. And here we found that best first search, which employs a priority queue and looks at the nodes with the highest upper bounds, was the best in terms of runtime, not depth first search or breadth first search. And then once we put that all together, we've implemented all the different versions of our algorithm, value iteration, modify policy iteration, policy iteration, and linear programming, along with the MIP method, that's the current state of the art. And we found that modify policy iteration and value iteration significantly outperform the current state of the art. And this gives us a lot of hope that our algorithm can be used to solve very large problems. So one thing we wanted to look at is how can we apply this algorithm to look at uh, a very big discrepancy in uh, model data. So Schechter and others proposed a model for HIV therapy intervention that had 72 different candidate MDP models. So 72 different models of the parameters. They had four health states based on different CD4 counts and the rewards were measured in discounted life years and the physician could either initiate HIV therapy or delay therapy. And the models were constructed using different natural history models and survival models. So what we ended up finding was that there were five different policies that could be taken depending on which model you were looking at. So this very top one was optimal for 52 of the 72 different models, where these other four enco uh, encompass the other 20. But when we use the MMDP, instead of solving for each model individually, we found that the best policy for all models was to initiate HIV therapy in all states. So in conclusion, uh, an MMB, MMDP problem is really common and can mitigate the ambiguity in which policy to use based on conflicting healthcare information. We also developed a custom branch and bound that can solve MMDPs much quicker than the state-of-the-art mixed integer programming formulation. And we also created a bunch of guidelines for how to best create this branch and bound algorithm. And using this MMDP branch and bound, we can create a definitive course of action when there's a lot of conflicting healthcare parameter data. I wanted to acknowledge Lauren and Dr. Denton for helping me throughout these past two years. And I uh, wanted to give you the opportunity to check out one of our two papers that we have online that's currently under review. And I'm really excited that we were able to get everything done that we wanted to. And even though I'm not going into industry, I learned a lot about AI algorithms and software engineering that have been really helpful in the classroom and in other projects that I've pursued. And because of this, I'm really interested in pursuing research after college. Thank you so much.